All right, Detective Sergeant Grote, your name for the record, please. Detective Sergeant Ken Grote. All right, if you can please raise your right hand. Just solemnly swear from the testimony you're about to give this matter the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, ma'am. I think you may proceed on the warrant. On Friday, December 15th, 23, approximately 10, 13 p.m., Wyandotte officers were dispatched to the area of 10th and Oakley in the city of Wyandotte for a traffic accident. The at fault driver had fled the scene on foot. <clears throat> officers arrived and located a view of the CERN stopped in the roadway with fright pasture side damage. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Joe, can you please, Joe, can you please close that door back there? Every time that door is open, I'm only catching uh, every few words. Thank you. All right, continue, please. It was apparent to officers on scene that the Buick could struck a park pickup truck. Wit witnesses stated that the driver of the Buick was a white female wearing black pants, a white undershirt, a black coat carrying a large purse. The female walked south on 10th from the accident. <clears throat> a video of the female walking away from the accident scene shown to officers on scene. At uh, 11.02 hours, Wyandotte officers were dispatched to 2283 10th Street, which was about two blocks from the accident, unit number one for a stolen vehicle report. Officers arrived and spoke to the defendant, Ms. Mrs. Radeback, who stated two men she knew vehicle. Ms. Radeback stated the men stole her keys last week and then took her car that night. It should be noted that um, Ms. Radeback was wearing a white undershirt, black pants, and was holding a large purse matching the female that fled the um, traffic crash. Officers later located the black jacket in a garbage can next to the Radeback's house. Officers were uh, able to identify Radback from the video as the driver of the vehicle. Ms. Radeback's story changed several times about the car, but continued to say it was stolen. While on scene, officers learned that Mrs. Uh, Radeback's three-year-old daughter was left alone inside the house. Family members forced the back door open and officers found a three-year-old inside the house uh, sleeping alone. Um, family members did take custody of that child. All right. <clears throat> Upon examination complaining witness, the court does find that there's that the offense charge is committed and that there is probable cause to believe the defendant committed the offenses. And <clears throat> Ms. Rayback, your name for the record, please. Nicole Rayback. <laughs> All right. And counsel, as to the Arraignment or the uh, arraignment, please. Your Honor, is the arraignment away formal reading? My client stands me. Or away the formal reading, enter a plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment. Man, you have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today, correct? Yes. You also have the right to be presumed innocent, so proving guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury, and you also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights? Yes. And the court has already entered a plea of not guilty on your behalf, and I think this is going to be December 28th over at the 28th District Court for a probable cause conference, but I'm going to confirm that. Counsel, as to bond. Your Honor, as to bond, my client is gainfully employed. She is not have probation or is she on parole. I don't believe that she has any conviction. She currently is working at AK Crossings at Southgate. She lives alone. Well, actually, she has two children at home, a three-year-old and a 10-year-old. Judge, I'd be respectfully requesting consideration for a personal bond. Thank you, Judge. And <laughs> ma'am, um, are you currently on probation or parole anywhere? No. Ever failed to appear in court for any reason? I'm sorry. Ever failed to appear in court for any reason? No. If you were to be tested, man, what's in your system? Nothing. And Detective Sergeant Grout, 
Uh, the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office didn't approve on the uh, child neglect. Your Honor, I think they missed a charge or two on that. We'll address that at the PCC. And there's a three-year-old child? Yes, ma'am. All right, and as to and as to bond detective. Your um, appearance in court, the seriousness of the charge and the uh, lack of the other charge, um, we'll ask for a $5,000, 10% bond. Ma'am, where is it you work? RK Crossings. What is that? Um, we take the disabled adults out into the community, and um, I do van runs at the end of the day to drop them off to their homes. All right, the proper calls conference is going to be January 4th at 8.30 a.m. The Lane County Prosecutor's Office doesn't have anybody. Um, I guess it's closed or off. I don't know. And so... Um, And where is your daughter now? My um, oldest is in school. My youngest is next door at my aunt's house. How old is your oldest? She's 10. And do you have any other pending charges, ma'am? Anywhere in any other court? Um, I, I think that I just have one from last weekend. I um, was drinking and I got pulled over. And what city was that in? In Wyandotte. Okay, well, uh, Council, what I'm going to do then is I might as well just pull that other file and have her arranged on that one today. Should. <clears throat> the court in this matter is going to order a $5,000, 10% bond. You have to possess, consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. And um, I'm going to have you uh, just um, have a seat because we're going to pull up the other one with this with for from last week. I'm assuming, presuming it's in the system. All right, and um, we can handle the other one while we're waiting. All right, we are on the record of the matter of the city of Wyandotte versus Daryl Stanley, 232550. Good morning, Your Honor. Excuse me, good afternoon, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke, appearing behalf of my client. This time we've sent to the matter being heard via Zoom. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Stanley, your name for the record, please. Daryl Stanley. All right, and... <clears throat> Today's, uh, as to the arraignment, counsel? As the arraignment, we wait for more reading. My client stands mute. Well, we're sending a message on the other one. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Court with the formal reading. Enter plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment. Schedule this matter for pretrial on January 2nd at 1045 a.m. A notice of prosecuting officials has been filled out and completed. And counsel as to bond. Your Honor, as to bond, my client indicates he's not on probation or parole. He does work as RAV construction. Uh, he lives with his mother. He has a strong family support system, and he has a 15-year-old daughter that he pays child support. We'd be respectfully requesting leniency for determining the appropriate plea, or excuse me, the appropriate bond. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> All right. And um, the complaining witness in this matter is... Nope. Or who's the complaining witness in this matter? Do you know the complaining witness? Yes. Uh, my, my, I think I believe it's my mother. You believe it's your mother? Yeah, I think I, I guess she, yeah. 
Is that Kimberly Stanley? Yes. And do you reside with your mother? Yes. Your Honor, I spoke with this mother this morning. If I could speak on bond. Um, yes, and just for the record, Detective Sergeant Group. Yeah, Detective Sergeant Kendra. I spoke, spoke with Mr. Stanley's mom today. She said uh, he has a severe drinking problem and she's deathly afraid of him and does not want him to return home um, while this case is pending. She said she has to lock herself in her bedroom uh, when he drinks to uh, stay away from her. All right, thank you. Do you work, sir? Where is it you work? Yes, Rad Construction. We uh, we do a lot of work here. Downtown Wyandotte. I've been working there for a few months now. Um, very good job. We do a lot of work in downtown Wyandotte. We uh, built District 142, the vault in downtown Wyandotte, stuff like that. We're doing the old Wyandotte City Hall. We're going to be starting McKinley Schools. All right. You've only been working there a few months? Yeah. Yes? Yes, that's your, that's correct, Jeremy. Okay, so, all right. Well, so you haven't been working on those projects. The company no, has. No, the company has, yeah. I, I'm... Yep. And so, sir, in the event you post bond, where is it you're going to stay? Because it won't be with your mother. Right, I'm going to have to stay with my brother, Your Honor. Which is where? Lincoln Park. And do you have any other pending cases, sir? Uh, no, I do not, Your Honor. Ever failed to appear in court for any reason? No, Your Honor. All right, well, let's see. What, uh, what happened with your matter in... Southgate. That's that's resolved. Okay, great. How was that resolved? Um, I served time there. And you just recently mm -hmm. served time. Let's see. In November of twenty-two, this court sentenced you to sixty days jail, and then you were. Sentenced to 15 days jail in June. You got out, and then you had another matter in why not, and we sent and the court sentenced you to 45 days jail on that matter. Oh, but there's one pending from October 2nd. Did you have your court date on that one? Yes, yes. That, that, that was resolved too. It was uh, reduced to just uh, a ticket, which I just paid. Oh, it was reduced to a ticket. Oh, yes. that was the agreement between you and the prosecuting attorney? Yes. Well, that proved to be helpful because look where you are now. Again, for drinking. Again. So you have a problem with alcohol, and now it's alleged that you've assaulted your mother. <clears throat> If I may speak, Your Honor, if I may speak, Your Honor, I didn't even know that she said that. This, that was all a complete Sir, I would advise you not to discuss the nature of the case. Anything you say can and will be used against you. This is not the appropriate venue. All right, thank you. All right, the court's going to order $7,500 10% bond. Please listen very carefully, sir, to these bond conditions, of which you will get a copy of. So I don't want you to come back later saying that you have no idea what your bond conditions are. You're not to have any contact with the complaining witness. That's phone contact, text message, email, social media, third party, anything of the like. I'm not really concerned that it's the holidays or not, sir. You're not having contact with your mother. You're not to enter the premises of the home on Cora Street. With the exception 
of one visit to obtain your personal belongings so long as you're accompanied by a police officer. So what that means is that you go to the police department in the event you post a bond, you go to the police department, they and then they will go with you. You don't go to the home and then call the police. You understand that process, sir? Understanding, Your Honor. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. You're not to have access to any firearms and or any weapons. Do you have? Do you own any of those, sir? No, Your Honor. Do you have access to any of those? No, Your Honor. You're also to have an alcohol and a GPS tether. House arrest, you may work with proof shown. All right, thank you. We'll see you back on January 2nd. Hey, Judge. Thank you. And then, counsel, as it relates to uh, Ms. Radeback, there is a matter, there is a matter that occurred, but we don't yet have the paperwork from the police department. So um, we can't proceed with the arrangement around that one. Understood. Okay. So, Detective Sergeant Grove, right? I think I ordered a 5,000 ton percent buy not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs on that one. So, I think that's great. Uh, All set, then, Your Honor? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Okay. And so, um, let's handle you ready on Timothy Thompson. Or, um, Tiffany Thompson? I am here. We're on the record in the matter of the city of Wine Diver, Tiffany Thompson, 23935. And appearance council. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke. Excuse me. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke appearing behalf of my client. It's time we can send to the matter being heard via Zoom. Okay. And Ms. Thompson? Um, Tiffany Thompson. All right. Thank you. And today is the date scheduled for sentencing on your client's plea to retail fraud. And counsel, do you have an opportunity to review the report and recommendation with your client? Your Honor, it's factually accurate. All right. And ma'am, um, it says that you're currently unemployed. You've been unemployed since 2022. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, how are you supporting yourself? Um, I'm living with my parents right now, um, and I'm currently going to like interviews to get a new job. Uh, I was having some illnesses and mental health stuff that kept me out of work for a little bit. Okay, and you have an expired mar medical marijuana card, and you use marijuana once a week. Uh, I would say less than that. Um, I don't really use it too much anymore since I'm not working. Okay. And in what form do you use it? Um, I've, I've probably like smoked out of friends within a couple weeks ago, but. Okay. Well, one ma'am, this court ordered you not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. So that would be a bond violation. And two, if you have asthma, I don't know that smoking would be the best for you, right? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I, I must have been confused by that because of the recreational thing. I, I forgot that I would have to get that renewed. So um, I can, going forward, I'll, I won't use it anymore. Well, ma'am, you weren't supposed to be using it while out on bond either. And so... Um, Okay, my apologies. I understand. Okay. And so, Council, as to the recommendation. Your Honor, the recommendations do seem appropriate. I'd ask they be adopted the nine months with terms and conditions, as well as her consideration for 771.1. I'd ask for her testing to establish a baseline. Obviously, there's been a violation. There's not going to be a necessity for any um, hearing in which we would contest that. But I would ask that a base level be established that would reflect that she has stopped using marijuana unless otherwise authorized by this court. Thank you, Judge. All right. Um, any objection to the restitution amount of $68? No objection. 
And um, and then you didn't return the necklace, correct? No, I was never told to pay or return anything, so I haven't done anything. I, I was just, I was just confirming that. All right, because you do have the necklace, right? No. And Judge, we've uh, we're able to lay a foundation. Obviously, the necklace is not being returned, but the amount is not in contention, and uh, we do stipulate to the restitution. All right, the court does find that you're eligible under seven seven one. The court also will find that there's reasonable grounds to part from MCL 769.5 after hearing from counsel, hearing from Ms. Thompson, reviewing the report, the recommendation. And the court's going to order nine months probation. You are eligible for early discharge. And this court will go over that in just a few moments. You're not to violate any criminal law or need of government. You're not to leave the state without the consent of the court. You are to report truthfully to your probation officer as often as your probation officer may require, in person, writing, or virtually. You're notified probation officer immediately if any change in address or employment status. You're not using any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed to be subjected to random testing. The rehabilitative goal for that condition so this court can manage your progress and maintain the absence of sobriety. You are to participate in economic crime class, the rehabilitative goal for that condition, so that you can learn skills which may help you eliminate behaviors that are associated with economic crimes, hopefully preventing this matter from happening again in the future. You're not to return to Glowfish Studios. You're to pay restitution the amount of $68. Any questions regarding the terms and conditions? No, Your Honor. Council, you in the break in the waiting room? Yes, Judge. I'm going to be switching devices. I and I see that uh, this computer is going to be doing up. Um, it's just going to be doing upgrade, and so I'm just switching devices. Okay, I just want to make sure that was you. All right, three hundred dollar fine, one hundred dollar screening assessment fee, four hundred and fifty dollars supervision oversight fee, fifty dollars a month in nine months. And since you're eligible for early discharge, some of that money may not be due. Two hundred dollars the cost of prosecution. Crime victim assessment fee of seventy five dollars. Justice system assessment fee of $50, restitution the amount of $68. $1,243. How much money can you pay per month and what date the month works best, ma'am? Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm not working at the moment, so I could maybe do like 50. Um, I didn't know I'd be owing more money than the restitution, so I wasn't aware of that. Well, yes, ma'am, there's fines and costs that have to be paid. So $50 per month beginning what? Beginning January? Yes, yeah, that, that'll be good. Thank you. January 26th will be your first payment, ma'am. As I did order, I did indicate you are eligible for early discharge so long as all the following have occurred. You completed half of your original term of probation. All of your probation requirements have been completed. You've had at least three months without any violations that all monies have been either paid in full or you've made a good faith effort to make a full payment. Okay? Yeah. Yes, sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. Please email into probation. Somebody will be with you shortly. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.